up, down, left, right. Everything you are watching happen on this screen right now is being controlled only with Mark's thoughts. So that just sent out a health notification. Mm -hmm. He describes it as contracting and then relaxing his brain. It takes concentration. It's a pretty involved process. It's, it's one I don't take lightly. This has all been pretty sudden for Mark. He was diagnosed with ALS in 2021. Mark has since lost control of his hands and arms. He will likely lose his voice. Mark didn't hesitate to sign up for a clinical trial to have this placed in his brain. It's called a stentrode. The one thing about this disease is it, it affects your physical, but not the mind. To me, it gives me the opportunity to be able to continue to do things that I'm able to do now just by thinking about it. In the world of brain-computer interfaces, or BCIs, it is still early days. In fact, up until recently, it's mostly led to monkeys being able to play Pong. But Synchron was one of the first companies in the world to get FDA approval for human trials. And Mark is one of those first humans. It's all the brainchild of this man, Dr. Tom Oxley. Text messaging is a really critical um, element of how we communicate with our family and friends now. So that's usually what people mostly want back. So then that will text the caregiver. So you just sent a text. I did. That's pretty cool. Pretty simple. Yeah, pretty cool. Dr. Oxley is a neurologist who first started thinking about the possibility of brain implants while in his native Australia. For people who have got paralysis or motor impairment, but they have that part of the brain still working, then if you can put a device in, get the information, get it out of the brain, then you can turn what previously was a signal controlling your body into a signal that controls a digital device. The Stentrode is the device that Oxley and his team at Synchron created. It's a cage of thin wired mesh with electrode sensors that can detect electrical brain activity, translate that activity, and then transmit it to devices such as a phone or a computer. It's amazing, that's all I can say. And just like a stent, it doesn't require open brain surgery. Instead, it's able to travel through the body's natural network of veins and sit in a major vein right in the middle of the brain. This is the actual deployment now. I even tried my own hand at implanting one. Keep pushing out the stent nice and slow. Keep going. There we go, so that's deployed on top of the brain inside the blood vessel. I think the procedure went well. It went well, it was your first attempt, no practice, and you landed it perfectly. The procedure is minimally invasive and you can't see the device just by looking. The stentrode is threaded up through a vessel along the neck. Right here you can feel a little cable. That's actually connecting that stent to a device that now sits right underneath the skin here. And it's from there that the signals are sent out that can help him control these devices in his environment. Our brains have billions of neurons firing electrical impulses that control our movements. Everything from shaking hands to taking a step. Each and every one of those actions is associated with a specific electrical signature. The stentrode, which again, sits right here around that area of the brain responsible for movement, learns to recognize those specific electrical patterns and essentially creates your own personalized dictionary of movement. What can a BCI not do? One myth for BCI is that it can read your thoughts. I mean, there's 80 billion neurons in the brain and you'd have to be watching all of them to um, have some sense of the complexity that's going on inside the brain. BCIs just take a snapshot of particular domains of function. And so what we're looking at on Mark's angiogram here, this is the, the actual stentrode. Dr. Raul Nagera implanted the stentrode into Mark's brain. If you really want to cure a problem like paralysis, you really need to specifically read the signals from your motor cortex from the center of movement in the brain. Previous generation BCIs tried to measure brain activity from outside the skull. But newer generation BCIs, including the one from Elon Musk's Neuralink, attempt to sit right on top of the brain. The stentrode is sort of in between. I like to make this comparison of going to a concert or a symphony. Listen to the brain outside of the skull, or concert hall, and the music sounds garbled, difficult to hear. 
If you're too close, you only hear one instrument. But by sitting in the center of the brain, like the Stentro does, you can hear the entire symphony more clearly. My hope is that in the next five to 10 years, you're gonna see this in the patient setting. It's a hope for patients of the future and a chance for Mark to continue living a full life now. 10 out of 10. <laughs> nice. Ready for a tournament. The brain control interface <laughs> pong tournament. Exactly.